Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the B-29 named DOC starts its engines, pilots Bill of Right 2 gains momentum, U.S. House Representative Lamar Smith wants more support for NASA. I'm Brie Cross, it's September 21st, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The group restoring the B-29 dock to airworthy condition reached a major milestone last Friday morning. All four of the airplane's Wright R3350 dual cyclone engines were started and run at their Wichita location. Watching an R3350 spit, sputter, and blow smoke during a start is a sight and sound to behold. A tweeted message from Jerry Seibenmark said, quote, And it's a go. All four of Doc's engines are running. The engine start was shown live on Doc's Friends website. The nonprofit Restoration Group said that the engine run is a major milestone on the way to returning the historic airplane to flight status. The airplane has been undergoing restoration in an on and off effort since it was returned to Wichita in 2000 after having been discovered in the desert in 1998. The current restoration effort is under the leadership of retired Spirit Aerosystems CEO Jeff Turner. The restoration of this famous aircraft is so complete, it might better be called a complete rebuild of the aircraft. U.S. Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma announced Friday that his pilot's Bill of Rights II has surpassed 60 co-sponsors in the Senate and continues to garner support from outside organizations. In February of this year, Inhofe introduced the pilot's Bill of Rights II legislation that would expand the third-class medical exemption for recreational pilots, and it also broadens and strengthens the important protections provided in the original pilot's Bill of Rights, authored by Inhofe and signed into law in 2012. Inhofe said in part, quote, I appreciate the significant bipartisan support for the Pilots' Bill of Rights too, and I am committed to seeing this legislation to the finish line during the 114th Congress. The Pilots' Bill of Rights too was authored by and for the general aviation community, and it is their persistency with their elected officials that has resulted in more than a majority of the Senate supporting this legislation, end quote. While the Pilots' Bill of Rights II is most noted for medical certification changes that would affect many general aviation pilots, other parts of the legislation are critically important for all pilots, from student up to and including airline pilots. After the break, NASA needs more support. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Concord's recombinant gas RG Series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. NASA's announcement that the Orion spacecraft will be ready for a manned launch not later than April 2023 drew a sharp rebuke from House Science, Space, and Technology Committee Chairman Lamar Smith. However, it was not NASA he rebuked. It was the current administration he's unhappy with because of their unsteady hand as it relates to NASA's mission. Chairman Smith said in part, quote, while this administration has consistently cut funding for these programs and delayed their development, Congress has consistently restored funding as part of our commitment to maintaining American leadership in space. We must chart a compelling course for our nation's space program so that we can continue to inspire future generations of scientists, engineers, and explorers." End quote. The House Science Committee's NASA Authorization Act for 2016 and 2017 
sought to restore $440 million to these crucial programs being developed to return U.S. astronauts to deep space destinations such as the Moon and Mars. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off the cloud and emergency need to turn to the field immediately. Uh, you know, from Papa, North Tower approach, understand you declare an emergency. Are you able to maintain your own terrain and obstruction clearance? Uh, negative. Give us back this uh, door flew off the aircraft. In this video, you'll hear the actual conversation of an aircraft that suffered a major problem immediately after takeoff. After watching the video, check your heart rate. Search, Our Door Flew Off the Aircraft on YouTube. After these messages, a suit is filed, no helicopter in my backyard. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. An apartment building owner in Harrison, Arkansas, has asked a judge to stop construction of a heliport being built adjacent to the North Arkansas Regional Medical Center. The suit claims that the heliport would adversely impact approximately 35 residents. Orbital ATK tested a small rocket thruster using a high-performance, eco-friendly propulsion system powered by a safe, low-toxicity rocket fuel. The small thruster is commonly used to maneuver satellites and is part of a series of tests by NASA. The new Airbus Beluga XL program has successfully passed the latest maturity gate milestone, marking the end of the concept phase, which freezes the design. The first of the five Beluga XLs will enter into service in 2019. ForeFlight has completed the second phase of integration with Garmin Avionics. This allows transfer flight plan data between ForeFlight Mobile and Garmin GTN and GNS navigators when connected via the Garmin Flight Stream 210, which is Garmin's Bluetooth wireless gateway. An Air Canada flight from Tel Aviv to Toronto diverted to Germany after a cargo hold heater failed in flight, and a dog being transferred by one of the passengers was in the unheated cargo hold. The dog was found to be in good condition after landing. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Boeing has started final assembly on schedule of the first 737 MAX 8, which is the first member of Boeing's new single-aisle family. After the first fuselage arrived on August 21st from Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita, Kansas, mechanics began installing flight systems and insulation blankets. Crews next moved the fuselage to the wing-to-body joint position on the new production line where the first MAXs will be built. Mechanics then attach the wings to the body of the airplane. Boeing will build the first 737 MAXs exclusively on the new production line in the Renton factory. Once the production process is proven, the team will extend MAX production to the other two final assembly lines in Renton. Boeing's Keith Leverkin said, quote, We continue to meet our plan on the 737 MAX program thanks to the dedication of our employee team and our suppliers. We have a lot more work still ahead of us, but we're very pleased with our progress to date, end quote. 
Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.